In this video, we will look at nested loops. The idea of nested loop is basically just having a loop inside another loop. So you can have a for loop inside another for loop, a while loop inside another while loop, or you can actually mix between them. So having a for loop inside a while loop, or a while loop inside a for loop. When you have multiple while loops or for loops inside each other, the inner loop, the loop that is inside another loop, will execute for its all iterations and then we'll go to the next iteration of the outside loop. So to make this clearer, let's like look at an example. So let's say that we wanted to print this output. We wanted to print five lines. In the first line, we are printing number one. In the second line, we are printing one, two. Third line, we are printing one, two, three. Fourth line, we are printing one, two, three, four. And in the fifth line, we are printing one, two, three, four, five. You'll notice we are printing five lines, so we are doing the same operation five times, printing a line. So that's our outside loop. We are printing five lines, so that will be our outside loop. In each line, we are printing multiple numbers at a time. So this will be my inside loop or my inner loop. So the outside loop will be responsible to um, iterate through the lines. And inside each line, we will have another for loop to iterate through the numbers. If we take another look, you will see that the highest number we print on each line is the same as the line number. So in the first line, line 1, the highest number we are printing, or the only number we are printing in this case, is number 1. In line 2, we keep printing numbers from 1 up to 2, which is the highest number we have in that line, which is equal to the line number. Same thing for line 3, we are printing from 1 up to the line number, which is 3, in line 4, we are printing from 1 up to the line number, which is 4. And in the fifth line, we are printing from 1 up to the line number, which is 5. We are incrementing the numbers by 1, so this will be our loop increment um, value. So in our outside loop, we are actually printing 5 lines. So we are starting the line from 1 up to 5, and we are incrementing by 1. So every time we are done with a line, we are going to the next line by 1. Now inside each line, we have another iteration, which is a for loop. We are going from number one, the first number in that line, up to the line number. So the line number we have here, this is our variable line. It will be the maximum value we are printing in that line. And we are incrementing the value of this number by one. We will be printing that number with a space. And then when we are done printing all these numbers in that line, we'll be printing a new line, so we are going to the new line and incrementing the line number. So let's actually try that example in Eclipse. So again, I need to print five lines. So I have a for loop that starts from one up to five, so i is less than or equal to five, and then we are incrementing the value of i by one after each iteration. Now, what do we want to do for each line? For each line, we are going to print multiple numbers. These numbers, we can start with integer, for example, j. And j starts from 1. This is the first number we are printing. And j is being incremented by 1 up to and including that line number, which is in our case is i. And we are, we are incrementing the value of j by 1. What are we going to do in that line? We are going to print the value, so system dot out dot print, not print line, and we are printing the value of j with a space. So we will concatenate it with a space. So we started with line one, j is equal to one, as long as j is less than or equal to i, so as long as j is less than or equal to i, so one is less than or equal to one, we are going to print one. When we are done printing one, we'll go and increment j, so j is now equal to two, is 2 less than or equal to the line number? In our case, in line 1, 2 is not less than or equal to 1, so we will not print number 2 in the first line. So now we are done with this loop. We'll go back and go to the next line. So we are incrementing i, which is our line number. So i is now equal to 2, and we are now in the second line. In the second line, we are starting again j, so the value of j will be restarted or reset to 1. 1 is less than or equal to 2, so we'll be printing 1 with a space and then incrementing the value of j, which is now 2. 2 is less than, 
still less than or equal to 2, so we are in the second line, i is equal to 2, 2 is less than or equal to 2, so we'll be printing 2 with a space. Now when we, when we are done with the line, we want to move to another line, so we can use system.out.println to move to the next line. So let's try to run this program. You'll see we are printing actually the numbers in each line. So first line, we started with i equal to 1, and we printed all the numbers from 1 up to the line number, which is 1. So from 1 to 1, we are printing 1. In the second line, we are starting from 1 up to the second line, which is 2. So we're printing 1, 2. In the third line, when i is equal to 3, we are printing from 1 up to um, the value of i, which is 3. So we're printing 1, 2, 3, and so on until we reach number 5 or line 5, we are printing from 1 to 5. Now we don't have to be always printing numbers, we can replace these numbers, for example, instead of printing numbers from 1 to 5, I can replace them with a star. So instead of printing a number, which is j, I'm gonna print a star with a space. So what will that do? It will print a triangle with stars instead of numbers. So we started with the first line, the first line is equal to 1, i is equal to 1, we are going to print stars one star in this line because we're going from one up to one so we'll be printing one star in the second line we're going from one up to two so we'll be printing two stars and so on two important things we need to remember about nested loops we do not update the outside loop variable until we are done executing all the iterations of the inner loop so in our example j was our inner loop variable we kept executing in the inner loop until we are done we have the condition j um, is not less than or equal to i. In that case, we'll go out to the outside loop and update the loop variable. So we do not update the outside loop variable until we are done with all the iterations of the inner loop. Also, when we go to the outside loop, when we are done with the inner loop, once we are done and we go back to the outside loop, the inner loop variable will be reset to the initial value. So this is the, our outside loop variable i. i will stay equal to 1 until we are done executing or finishing all the iterations of this loop and we go back to the um, outside loop. So i will remain the same value until we are done executing all these um, iterations and this line after all the iterations and then we will be updating the value of i. Now when we update the value of i for the next iteration, so when i is equal to 2, j will be reset back to 1. So when we go inside the um, loop with i equal to 2, the value of j will now be reset to 1 and will start the operation over, over again. So j will start with 1 for line 2, it will start with 1 for line 3, it will start for 1 with line 4, and it will start with 1 for line um, 5. So where would do we find the nested loops in our programs? Let's take a look or another look at our cashier example. What we had before, we were scanning items for a customer. We have a customer that um, is placing items on the cashier's belt. And for each item, we wanted to scan the price of that item and adding it to the total. So we are repeating the same operation for all our items. So we can use a for loop to go, or a while loop to go from the first item until we reach the divider bar. But now instead of having one customer, we can have multiple customers in our line. So if we had more than one customer in our line, in that case, we need to iterate through each customer. And for each customer, we want to have or scan all their items. So we have an outside loop to iterate through our customers. Let's say we have five customers in our line. So we'll start with the first customer and then we'll have a while loop for them to iterate through their items. So while we have a customer in line, we'll get that customer. And for that customer, we'll iterate through their items. So I can have a while loop that iterates through the customers. And for each customer, we can have an inner loop that iterates through their um, items. So if we look at our cashier's example again with multiple customers, we start by looking for a customer in the line. And while we have a customer in the line, we want to set their total to zero. And then we want to grab their first item. And while this item is not the divider bar, we'll be adding that price of that item to the total and reach for the next item. We keep repeating the same operation here. We keep um, getting the next item, 
checking it's not the divider bar and adding that price to the total. When we are done with all the items, we reach the divider bar. We want to output the total price for that customer and then we are looking for a next customer in line. If we have a customer in line, we'll do the same operation again. We set the total to zero, reach for their first item and then do the while loop to calculate their um, total price.